I grew up an only child in Brockton, Massachusetts. I have two half-brothers and a half-sister whom I consider my full siblings, but we didn't grow up together because they are a lot older than me. I grew up in an old house, which is where I believe my love of historic houses started. I remember I loved the glass doorknobs and creaky floors. I still do to this day. Growing up, I had a crazy imagination. My family still jokes about how when I was five, I told everyone that I was an extraterrestrial that hatched from an egg in my aunt's backyard pool. In first grade, my friend's mom called up my mom to express her concern with me hanging out with her kid. I had told her that I had magical powers and could control the wind, and I also said that there was a hidden trap door in the ground of my backyard that led to another world, and that if she fell through, she would be pulled into it and would have to live the rest of her life with nymph creatures as her new parents. That made her cry and didn't go over well with her human parents. My parents still have no idea where I came up with this stuff. My mom decided it might be a good idea to try to steer my creativity to another direction, and she got me involved in all kinds of extracurricular activities like modeling, dancing, singing, and acting. Of all these things, I took a special interest in acting and films. I started going on auditions for commercials and movies, and actually landed a few. When I was eight, I did the movie Hocus Pocus. I remember being fascinated with what went on behind the camera. After shooting wrapped, I asked my dad for a camcorder for my birthday. Everyone said there was no way he would get me one since I was just a kid. But on my ninth birthday, I woke up and ran down the stairs to find a nice big giant VHS camcorder sitting on the dining room table. That camera was the beginning of everything. Flash forward to fifth grade, my parents transferred me to a private Catholic school. I liked it better than public school. Why? Because it was in an old building, of course. Think a much smaller version of Hogwarts. I remember loving the spookiness of the building when it would rain. Add thunder into the mix and it was even better. The dim halls with dark wood and statues of Mary. I had a weird obsession with all things Victorian. My walks to the girls' room would often consist of me pretending I was a student of a British boarding school back in the late 1800s. Yeah, I was a weird kid. Unsurprisingly, I never really fit in. There was the fact that I was weird, and that I was starting to go into an awkward physical stage. There were 8th graders that would make fun of my frizzy hair on the bus ride home from school every day, and stuck gum in it on several occasions. The boys in my grade would call me things like mustache because of my abundant facial hair, and I started to go into puberty way before everyone else in my class. I didn't look like any of the other skinny girls anymore. I remember always feeling insecure. The one thing that did make me feel happy was making home movies. I didn't have many friends, but the one or two that I did have at a given time were subjected to hours of shooting some pretty high-tech film footage. Or at least so I thought. I was obsessed with special effects and would base all of my movies around things that involved stuff disappearing, shrinking people, objects flying, you name it. I did videos about magical genies, possessed dolls, time travel, aliens, entire cities underneath my bed, anything fantasy or science fiction that I could think of. I would literally edit with two VHS players, one to record the final cut and the other pressing pause and play. Looking back on those videos today, they were hilariously awful, but it was fun. And whenever I speak to someone from my childhood, my home movies are always the first thing they remember. The movie making lasted several years. Flash forward to 8th grade graduation, my teacher knew about my love of videography and offered to let me do the school video yearbook. I jumped at the chance. Did I mention my mom was always super overprotective? She's an older mom and always took her worrying to the extreme. Sometimes it actually became comedic. Well, to everyone else but me. I remember whenever it was thundering outside, she would make me sit in the closet for the duration of the storm, but only after removing the vacuum cleaner. Why? Because it had a metal pipe thingy on it and it would attract lightning, of course. A few times there were tornado warnings, which is odd because I grew up in New England and not Kansas. But anyway, my mother would make me sit in the basement with my bicycle helmet on. My bicycle helmet! At this point, I was like 13, so it was so not cool. Not like anyone else was around to see it, but it still made me feel extremely dumb. Going into high school, I found myself changing. I was sick of being the chubby weird kid. 
The summer before, I went on an unhealthy crash diet and lost a ton of weight. I found myself really consumed in keeping the weight off. Throughout all of the previous years, I stayed active in singing and musical theater. In high school, I kind of got away from it for a while. Staying thin became something that consumed me. It became an unhealthy obsession that made all of my passions and interests fade into the corner. I struggled with undereating for most of freshman year. My mom noticed and had me see a therapist. And fixing myself was a process. The summer after that, I went to theater camp and started feeling like my old self again. I rediscovered my old loves and pulled myself out of a pretty dark place. In singing classes, I discovered I could sing pretty darn high. My teacher suggested I audition for private classical voice lessons at the New England Conservatory of Music. I never thought in a million years I would get in, but I did. High school itself wasn't the greatest experience for me. I had a few friends in my school, but the majority of my friends were from plays I did and attended theater school with me. They understood my weirdness, and I almost fit in. Junior year in high school, my friend set me up with a guy her boyfriend knew. We met on AOL Instant Messenger and sparks flew. Flash forward 11 years later and we're still together. Talk about cray cray. I always dreamed I would marry a tenor that I could sing duets with. He's not a singer. I'll tell you this right now, he is not a singer. <laughs> and he's not a thespian, but he is a movie buff like me, so it worked out. After graduation, skip through the years of moving to Florida, being poor and driving a beat up car with a broken windshield that burned oil and blew black smoke everywhere, including into the car itself because one of the windows wouldn't go up. Yeah, driving, choking on black smoke, not the safest thing. I moved back to Massachusetts and got a decent job at a college. I worked in the human resources department. It was great at the beginning, but it ended up not working out. I then got a job at the student life department at a different college, and I loved that job, and all the people that I worked with too. I enjoyed working in the college environment. Something was always going on, and it was fun to be around all the hustle bustle. During this time, I had started posting videos on YouTube for fun. I had gotten back into making home movies, and again was playing around with special effects. I was fascinated by the green screen. As a kid, I always dreamed of being able to superimpose a different background and to put myself into a different environment. Editing software had just become available for consumers, and I could now digitally do all the crazy special effects I had always wanted to do as a kid, but couldn't do conventionally. I started doing these whimsical, tongue-in-cheek fantasy videos in a series I called Disclosed. They were really just a way for me to play with the green screen. But one of the episodes actually got featured on the front page of YouTube, which was a huge thing. I was running around screaming when it happened. I was so happy. The video brought me a ton of hate comments. Strangely, they didn't bother me because the series was supposed to be super cheesy. But I also got thousands of subscribers from it, which was so exciting. One day I got a call. It was from YouTube. They were saying they were starting a beta program where they selected a few YouTubers to be able to actually make money from their videos. I thought that was awesome because after Bills, I was blowing the rest of my paycheck on props and costumes. I named the series The Princess Chronicles. In the series, I had a ball doing character acting. I think I actually play weird characters better than I play normal people. I dressed up as ogres, pirates, all kinds of crazy characters. The only problem was that the episodes would take forever to create. I was playing all of the characters, and there was a ton of special effects involved. I wanted to try something different. So I started doing music videos of satirical original songs I wrote about celebrities and current events. They started to go viral, and it was then that the media picked up on it, and a lot of my videos were covered on national news. At that time, it felt right to leave the college. Making videos was becoming a sustainable career. But it wasn't until I started doing parodies that my channel really took off to the next level. Subscribers were pouring in. And my videos were getting hundreds of millions of views. My life just went into a whirlwind. I up and moved back down to Florida a second time because I just couldn't stand the snow anymore. Flash forward and I ended up buying the old home of my dreams. Yes, I said old because I like old stuff. Remember? I discovered designing and decorating was a new passion of mine. Meanwhile, years went by and my YouTube career kept going on strong. My favorite part was being able to share my crazy creations with you guys. Which brings me to now. I've been on YouTube for seven years and I feel like I won the lottery. 
I could not express how incredibly lucky I've been. So many amazing opportunities and doors have opened for me because of YouTube that I would never, ever have had if I had been someone just going out on auditions or casting calls. And I am always grateful for all of it. I love you all and can never express how much you are watching me all these years means to me. So what does the future hold? I have no idea. But all I know is that my past has been pretty damn good and much of that is thanks to you guys. I'll see you in the next one.